the $10,000 cap on state and local tax deductions, known as the SALT cap, was supposed to raise around $100 billion in annual revenue. But a new study from the Tax Policy Center found that loopholes are now costing the federal government $20 billion a year, meaning the cap generates only 80 to 80, 85% of its expected revenue. That's because 36 states now allow owners of pass-throughs and partnerships to avoid the cap on their state taxes. The pass-through or firm pays an elective tax, gets a full deduction, passes that deduction on to the owner. As a result, the wealthiest business owners are now avoiding the cap while wage earners and property owners, like you and me, Joe, are footing the bill. Joining us to discuss is Erica York, senior economist at the Tax Foundation, and Jason Furman, former chairman of the Council of Economic Advisors under President Obama. He is currently a professor of government at Harvard's Kennedy School. Jason, I want to start with you. Do you think this is fair? I mean, the Democrats, Democratic governors that are passing a lot of this legislation that creates this loophole have always talked about tax fairness, getting the wealthy to pay more of their fair share, and yet they've allowed a loophole that is really benefiting the top 1% of the 1%. Yeah, look, the SALT deduction is like the trickle-down economics for the Democrats. Um, they argue that if they do this tax cut, they'll be able to sustain a better revenue base, be able to sustain better schools. Um, and the evidence for that is really quite um, limited. So I don't love that they're opening up these loopholes. And frankly, I think when policymakers passed this tax reform to begin with, I think they knew some of those loopholes were there and weren't particularly preemptive in getting rid of them. Well, they definitely knew they were there. I mean, the Treasury Department under... Uh, President Trump and Secretary Mnuchin basically blessed this, saying, well, all the other workarounds are not OK. These workarounds are OK. The Biden administration said they were going to propose legislation or regulations clarifying it, and they haven't yet. What do you think is the best ultimate solution? This is going to expire, this salt cap, at the end of 2025, along with all the individual provisions of the Tax Act that was passed in 2017. What do you think the best solution will be as to this SALT cap, should it be extended? Should it be killed? Look, I would love to see the SALT cap. Oh, are you asking me or? Yeah, Jason, you first. And then I want okay, to get great. to Eric. Um, yeah. I'd love to see the SALT cap um, extended as it is. If they want to tighten it up further, that's great with me. Um, I think the bigger set of debates in 2025 is that taxes as a whole will be set to go up by nearly 1% of GDP. I think that's our best shot we have in the next couple of years at very significant deficit reduction in a country where the deficit has risen quite a lot um, recently. And so policymakers, I think, ideally will have to thread a needle where they let tax revenue go up, but maybe they do it by some type of permanent tax reform rather than the type of temporary patches that were passed in 2017. So, Erica, do you agree with that, that we should let most of these other provisions expire, thereby raising more revenue? I mean, do we have a revenue problem or do we have a spending problem? Yeah, if, if you look at the CBO's budget outlook, it, it's obvious that spending is what is driving our, our growing deficits and our growing debts. Spending is going to be above trend, while revenues are roughly at trend. But I do agree with Jason in that we, we should extend the salt cap. We should go further. You know, the classic recipe for tax reform is to broaden the base and lower the rate. And TCJ followed that recipe to some extent. I think in 2025, lawmakers need to follow that recipe a bit more closely and go further with the base broadeners, get rid of salt, explicitly disallow these workarounds and use that revenue to pay for on a revenue neutral basis improvements in the tax system. Because we want a tax system that points toward economic growth, that incentivizes work, incentivizes investment. That's going to help us um, grow. That, that helps with the debt to GDP issue. And you can do it on a revenue neutral basis through these base broadeners. So you think we should not only keep the cap, but actually get rid of the 10,000 and just just be zeroed out so that none of your state local tax deduct deductions could be applied to your taxes, including property taxes? I, I do. I think that is a good policy trade. Politically, that's a tough sell. 
but it, it goes in the direction of tax reform. You, you broaden the base and you use that to pay for rate reductions for everyone. At the end of the day, that, that results in a, a more simple tax code, a more efficient tax code. It lets state and local tax policy be decided at the state and local level, and it lets federal tax policy be decided at the federal level. And Jason, if we let all these provisions expire as scheduled at the end of 25, you're talking about basically the standard deduction being cut in half. You're talking about raising all of the marginal rates, including on middle, middle class income taxpayers, and you know, changing the trust of the state tax so where that exemption would be cut in half. Do you think that's going to be palatable for either party to have a tax increase for everyone across the board, especially given that the economy in 2025 at least as we're seeing it now, is likely not going to be very strong. Look, I don't think the tax code should go back to where it was in 2016. What I think should go back to that is the revenue level um, that we have. But how do you and, get there, though? How, so where does that come from? Look, ideally, you'd sit down and say, here's the revenue level that we need to hit. What's the best way to hit that level? And I agree that level, hitting that level with a broader base with lower rates, with a larger standard deduction, would be exactly the way to do it. Uh, we may have divided government when all of this happens, and then it'll be a little bit like a game of chicken. And the question will be, will the Democrats be willing to say, you know, our first best is to reform the tax code together. If you don't reform the tax code together, we will ensure that all of this expires, revenue goes back up, and then we can come back a year or two later and have a debate off the higher revenue levels. Look, this is the law that the Republicans passed. They picked this revenue level. I'm just saying meet the Republican revenue level, but do it ideally in a better way. But if you can't, uh, just do it because we do have a real deficit problem and no tax cuts won't help uh, our debt to GDP ratio.